terahertz is expanding. It's a hot new field in, in, for many reasons. Um, it's, it's, it's hot in computing because the terahertz region represents the speed limits of microprocessors as we know them today. Um, it's also big in communications. Um, it's also big in radar. The terahertz devices we have going on right now are, are um, photo, photo mixers and photoconductive device, photoconductive switches, which um, are each used in their, in their place. One, the photo mixers are used for coherent radiation generation. Photoconductive switches are used for impulse generation. So almost like a strobe light concept where you can produce very broad spectrum of radiation over, spread over many wavelengths and do it in very short bursts. And that turns out to be a great way to make a radar, which is what one of our systems is. The photomixer, with, because of its coherence, is a great way to look at spectral signatures, narrow features that you see in the electromagnetic spectrum, either by transmission or reflection, from various materials or through various uh, obscurance. So one of the things that the terahertz is very popular for is the fact that it can get through clothing, it can get through various types of fabric that are made in luggage, like Naga hide, for example, much better than you can in the infrared or the visible, where you're just blind. And that being the case, you can image, you can extract signatures in materials that are obscured from the human vision. Uh, this, of course, is important in airport security. It's important in explosives detection. It's important in drug detection. Um, it's now becoming important in, because of some of our work, um, in biomedicine. So amongst other things, we engage with the biologists and the medical researchers to try to take advantage and exploit these signatures to do things like DNA assay. DNA assay is extremely important, not only in health and in medicine, but also in law enforcement. It's very commonly used now um, it, it, under criminal investigations of various felonious things. Um, it's also, of course, very important in terms of disease assessment in medicine. And so we have uh, a nanofluidic chip technology that we work with a small company out in California that produces these chips, uh, presents DNA inside the chip. The chip acts very much like a, um, agar in, in, in uh, gel electrophoresis, which is the, one of the more common ways to do DNA assay. But we can do it under electronic control and with, because of that nano chip technology, we can actually bring our terahertz and get signatures of the DNA as it's flowing through the nanochannels. It turns out DNA and proteins crystallize. This has been known for over 50 years. More recently, people have figured out how to take the DNA or proteins and build three-dimensional structures that often get called scaffolds, in which the, the scaffold is made of the very DNA the type of DNA that you find in, in life of all sorts, and can perform certain biochemical or biological functions very, very uniquely. For example, building up DNA um, crystals that have the shape and form factor to be able to intercept viruses identify viruses, perhaps even capture viruses, and then neutralize those viruses. The obvious imp implication of that kind of capability on medicine is, is per extremely profound. Now, the, DNA, the interest of the DNA crystals is, since we can lo look at them with a new perspective, with a new a frequency in the terahertz realm, and we can look at a broad range of these and try to find uh, different patterns that are unique to this um, structure, the construct of a DNA crystal. This is a, one of the DNA crystals. This here is one millimeter. The it's a one millimeter bar. DNA crystals, like I said, these done at Marshall University are fabulous. They're uh, great in number, but also 
impressive in the size that they've been able to do. If you look through the literature, most of them are a little smaller. And of course, they do have some smaller ones. This one here looks to be about three or 400 uh, microns, or 0.4 millimeters. It has a little air bubble in there, but that really doesn't affect us. So this is also on a sample holder that we can place directly on our instrument. And earlier today, um, this is a close-up of it, we're, this is one of the crystals that was scanned. And it's not just DNA crystals. Uh, I've also done bacteria, uh, specifically the bacillus bacteria, which is, uh, includes the anthrax bacillus. I didn't put that here, but I used one that is similar to anthrax that is not harmful to people and oh, showed that that particular bacteria has a unique signature. One of the things that really distinguishes us as a university operation from a lot of other competitors around the country is our, the nature of our operation is very, very comprehensive. We start with basic terahertz devices and science and we build all the way up to systems and the reason that's important is because more and more the new, the new technology areas, the hot technologies, the things that people want to invest in, uh, both, both uh, government investment and private investment, are systems. Um, more and more small pieces, widgets, devices uh, are made by sole manufacturers. Um, and so there's more and more room, both from a R&D standpoint and from an educational standpoint, uh, and opportunities for, the, for students for future employment in the systems arena. We are very systems oriented, but our systems are founded on our basic technology and science. Part of the Research Scholars Chair program is coming from Columbus is to try to um, use the chairs in a way that can transition technology to industry, engage with industry, and move ideas and devices from the academic arena to the Ohio industrial sector. You know, I, I mentioned some distinguishing factors about the comprehensiveness. So many scientists in this field, the sensor field, do one little piece of the puzzle. You know, they may be very good at devices, they may be good at signal processing, they may be good at algorithms, they may be good at, at components. Um, with that kind of operation, you're at somebody else's mercy. If you're in the middle, you're at the, at the mercy of, of the basic science, right? And if you're, at the, if you're doing the basic science, you're at the, at the mercy of the system integrator. So we kind of cross that whole span with the thought in mind that we can very quickly become the best of the best with our systems. And some of the systems you'll see around here, some of the operations are state of the art. There's nobody doing things any better in the world than we are, either in terms of the, the, the basic science or the technology.